Hello, and uh, welcome to this edition of Credit Matters TV. My name is John Gibling, uh, and I'm here with my colleague Yulia Kozlova today uh, to talk about uh, a recently published report uh, entitled uh, Capital Erosion Threatens the Asset Growth of the Major Russian Banks. Hello, Yulia. Thank you. Uh, Yulia, um, in the report, you uh, focus on the, uh, the capital position of the top 30 banks in Russia. What are the major findings that you've come up with? We see that capital adequacy in Russian banks is deteriorating since reaching its peak in 2009-2010, when most of the banks deleveraged to a significant degree in response to the global financial crisis. From the second half of 2010 and through 2011, however, total system-wide assets uh, grew by about 40%, which led to gradual depletion of banks' capital ba basis. Mm -hmm. To compare capital adequacy positions of banks in different countries and regions, we use our own metric, risk-adjusted capital. And risk-adjusted capital for top 30 Russian leading banks, which account for about 80% of systems assets, uh, fell by 1% uh, from 7 to 6% in 2011. Uh, interestingly, a VTB bank was the most noticeable contributor to this uh, capital erosion, uh, which was mainly driven by the acquisition of the Bank of Moscow, which put material pressure on the bank's capital base. Mm. All right, thank you. That's interesting. I mean, what, what, what implications do you think that this capital erosion will have on the asset growth of Russian banks going forward? You might know that all Russian banks need to comply with the central bank's requirement for regulatory minimum capital, which should be a minimum capital ratio, which should be above 10%. Uh, we see that this regulatory ratio for top 30 Russian banks was decreasing from 17% in January 2011 to less than 14% in uh, July 2012. Uh, this uh, capital erosion uh, put pressure on banks' capitalization uh, to the point when banks are forced to uh, slow down their asset growth to avoid further deterioration of capitalization and non-compliance with regulatory capital ratios. Uh, as a result, we believe that asset growth will slow down in 2012 in comparison to previous years uh, to about 10%, that's net of inflation, mm -hmm. and it should recover to double digits next year. Uh, consequently, banks' capital ratios uh, will stabilize and even recover for a number of banks. So, Yulia, I mean, obviously the, uh, um, the Russian banks can uh, slow down their, their asset growth to improve their capital positions. But they can also uh, look to their shareholders for external capital support. Um, do, do you see other uh, alternative capital uh, um, measures that they can take, other alternative uh, sources that they can look for? You're absolutely right. Uh, however, most banks try not to slow down their assets growth just because of capital constraints to be able to keep up with their competitors. Mm -hmm. uh, on, an, on the other hand, um, shareholder support may be limited in times of stress. So many banks seek alternative capital sources such as conversion of subordinated debt into equity or issuing hybrid capital securities. Um, I need to say that both options are currently not widely exploited by Russian banks. Uh, we saw two most recent examples. One was Gazprom Bank, which converted its subordinated deposit into Taiwan equity. And the second one was VTB, uh, which was the first on the market to issue deeply subordinated perpetual capital securities. Right, okay. And, and these alternative uh, capital resources, do you think that there is sufficient market demand for, for these instruments? Uh, yes, actually we think that demand for these instruments is relatively strong and we expect growing interest for these instruments, especially among state-owned banks, mm -hmm. which have better recognition on international capital markets. However, of course, these capital sources are limited only for the leading market players. And we expect the majority of Russian banks to rely on retained earnings or on direct um, injections from the shareholders to improve their capital positions. Mm, okay. 
So how, how do you see that all these developments will impact Standard & Poor's ratings on, on Russian banks going forward? At the moment, both projected risk-adjusted capital ratios for rated Russian banks and our weighted average ratio for top 30 Russian banks which were calculated are moderate, as our criteria define this term, and this has neutral impact on the bank's ratings. However, we often make a negative adjustment uh, to the bank's risk position to account for specific risk factors that each bank has. Mm -hmm. And this combined assessment of capital and risk position is a negative credit factor for the majority of banks that we rate at the moment. And we expect this combination um, not to change materially in the future. However, uh, we do not expect a significant number of rating actions this and next year just because of the uh, capital erosion uh, in Russian banks. Uh, this is because we factor into our base case scenario developments of the main financial indicators and risk-adjusted capital ratios for rated banks and these assumptions are already reflected in our ratings and outlooks on the banks that we rate and most of the outlooks of Russian banks are now stable. Mm, okay. Thank you, Yulia. That was very interesting. Um, that concludes our session of Credit Matters TV today. Uh, thank you very much for listening and goodbye.